All right, hey everybody, time for, um, I've actually got two beers today and um, they're both kind of Peaky Blinders themed. I've got this one, Saddler's Peaky Blinder Lager and uh, Shelby's Shelby IPA. It's going to focus. Um, yeah, this one says what the hell? Official beer of the TV series. So yeah, this is this is like associated with the TV series. This one I think is just a, a themed, but on the Peaky Blinders, the actual. Uh, See the pictures are, are like mug shots of of Peaky Blinders. So I, I, some people might not even know what I'm on about. Like it's a like a TV show called Peaky Blinders, but it's based it, it's set in like the 1920s or something like this. I'm probably getting all the facts wrong here, but <laughs> it's set in Birmingham in like the 1920s or something, and uh, it's based on a real life gang called the Peaky Blinders and um, apparently back then it was like the Wild West in Birmingham and there was just gangs of youths that would hang out in the streets and uh, cause trouble and um, you know do organized crime and the TV show is pretty good I think it takes quite a lot of liberties the TV show um, you know, it's quite stylized. It's not. I don't think historical accuracy is like its its main aim. You know, it takes inspiration from history, but it's it's quite stylized. The music's modern, and um, for example, I don't I don't know if they really the Peaky Blinders really had razor blades in their in their caps that they used to blind people with. Maybe they did, but I feel like some of these things are like embellishments to make the TV show more interesting. Uh, anyway, it's popular enough to get some beers made about it. At least this one's an official one. So yeah, uh, I guess this one might be there to cash in, or maybe it existed before the TV show. Who knows? But I've seen they haven't. You know, they've had to go for some actual proper mug shots from the olden days, not a not a, a shot from the TV show. So uh, I'm gonna try this one first. Peaky Blinder Lager. Smells a bit tinny. That could just be the tin. <laughs> I don't know, it just like, got like a little metallic tang off that, but you know, it's probably, I am smelling a can. Crisp, crisp, crisp refreshing pale lager that balances the soft, smooth bitterness of British hops with the uplifting pine and citrus notes of American Cascade. Okay, let's try it. Very light looking. Smells a bit funky to be honest. And I don't think I've had this very long. It's not out of date or anything. But I'm getting a bit of a, wh a whiff off this. Hmm. No, it's not out of date till 2022. It might be alright. Maybe it was just a strange tang off it. Hmm. It's gone a bit flat. I'm not sure about this. Like cloudy for a lager, isn't it? Let's give it a go anyway. It's quite, it's quite sweet citrusy that. I don't think it's, I don't think it's bad. It's just suspiciously flat. Look at that for a lager. That's quite nice that. It's quite, got quite a lot of flavour in it. I didn't expect it. It's got a nice like bitter aftertaste, but the the citrusy flavours remind me more of like a um, a sherbet lemon or something like that because it's quite sweet. Mm, it's, not, it's not bad. Uh, 
Yeah, that's um, that's quite different. That I, I was expecting it just to be like a, a general lager, but that's that's quite a tasty, quite a tasty drink. Yeah, Peaky Blinders. I thought I thought it was quite good for like the first couple of seasons. It's got some good characters in there, but. I don't know. I feel like some shows they try to. I feel like as it went on, it expanded the scope of the show out from where they were, and but it kind of lost its roots in a way. It became a bit too different to what it was originally. Like um, you know, it's always good to have. As as shows go on and on, you know, not have them all just stay in the same place. It would be boring, but you know, to have them expand and grow and all this, but it's almost like it forgot where it started and it became a quite a different program. So you know, it starts out and it's like this organized crime family, and it's they're, they're struggling to survive in. In, the, in Birmingham and uh, there's all this I don't know I don't want to stay too, say too much about the show to spoil it but as it goes on I think by the last season it was like Thomas Shelby was like a he was like a politician in this big office and it was just I don't know it just didn't feel like the same show and I don't know uh. Yeah, and some and I felt like sometimes they introduced characters that were kind of like, I don't know, uh, maybe the writing suffered a bit in the later seasons. It wasn't terrible, but it just changed a bit. Ah, this beer is quite nice. I'd have another one of these, and I bought one can because I thought this is probably some cash-in thing. It's not very good, but it's actually quite nice. You know, I'm, I'm a bit disappointed that there's no head on that, it's completely flat. And I wonder if this is, it doesn't say anything on it about like how it's made or anything like that. But I was thinking as I was looking at these, it'd be nice if they made something quite period. You know, like they made something like they would be drinking back then in the pubs. I know in the show, they, I think they started distilling rum or whiskey or something. Been a while since I watched it. Um, but it'd be nice if they made some beers using like recipes from that sort of era. Maybe they do. I don't. I don't know the history of beer that much. I don't know whether they made IPAs back then, or whether this, you know, whether they would have been like this sort of recipe, or is this the kind of lager they would drink back then? I don't know, in my mind it would be more like bitters and things, but like I say, it's, I don't really know the, the history. It probably makes more commercial sense to sell a beer that modern day drinkers would like, rather than just following an old recipe just to be authentic. But that's something I'd be interested in. Alright, that lager was alright. Let's try the IPA. Shelby IPA. This is by, and these are by a completely different brewer as well. Saddlers for that one, and this is by uh, Thornbridge, by order of the Shelby Company Limited. You know what I've noticed as well? This one doesn't say Peaky Blinders on it. it says Shelby, official beer of the TV series, and then it says by order of the Shelby Company. If you've seen the show, you know it's. Um, oh, it does say on the back. The official beer of Peaky Blinders, the TV series. An India Pale Ale inspired by the style of beer consumed in... The, oh, it is. Okay. Con, inspired by the style of beer consumed in 1919 at the time of the Peaky Blinders. We have created this kind of IPA that might have been found behind the bar at the Garrison Tavern in a small in small Heath, Birmingham. Shelby pours a golden amber in... 
Oh, Shelby pours a golden amber in colour with a nose of stone fruit and red berries. Okay, well, I, I stand corrected then. I, I was thinking maybe they're just making like this because everyone's drinking IPAs these days. But like they seem to have actually, well, they say they've tried to make it inspired by a recipe from back then. So, I mean, I don't know how much IPA recipes have changed over the years. I know they tend to these days go for the more like hop, hop bomb type of thing. Modern day IPAs are just, you know, it's just an explosion of hops, but. This one smells funky as well. I'm going to look with my nose tonight. <coughs> yeah, okay. Not much more in for one there, but we'll give it a go. Let's pour it out. Nice colour on there. Looks like a looks like iron brew or something. Quite clean looking. I don't know. Would beers back then be this clean? Would they be a bit more cloudy? Yeah, none, none of these beers have smell smell that good, but taste wise, the last one was all right. So. That's quite that's quite interesting now it's got more of a sort of it's less of the the hop explosion that I'm used to with the modern IPAs um, and it's got more of like a sort of like an old bitter type of taste to it yeah, I wonder. I wonder how. I wonder how true that is that they followed like an old, you know, insta inspired by the style of beer consumed in nineteen nineteen. But it's it tastes quite interesting. Not not like a lot of IPAs that I've had. Yeah. Yeah, maybe it's just the type of hops they've used. It's not a like a it's not a, like a super citrusy type of hop. It's more like a I don't know, like a sort of woody sort of taste. I don't know if it says what kind of hops they've used. It says citrus. It does say in flavor notes citrusy lemon bitterness, but it to me it doesn't taste like that. It's not like a. I don't know. I don't know. I I don't like sitting here on the video and reading the bottle for ages. I just I was just kind of intrigued by it. By order of the Peaky Blind, I've, I've noticed that was the thing throughout the show. Every every couple of episodes, something had happened, and then the, the Arthur character would s stick his head up, and go by order of the Peaky Blinders. Seemed to be a regular occurrence, didn't it? I felt like I felt like that Arthur character lived to say that. You know, that was his. He felt like he was completing his role in life when he could. Something would happen. And then Arthur could end this by sticking his long neck up and going, By order of the Peaky Fucking Blinders. I like to imagine that he does that just randomly throughout the day, even when uh, you know he's not meant to be saying it. Just sitting there having a nice drink and he'll suddenly start saying it. And I'm like, no, Arthur, no, it's not, not time yet.
Yeah, bits of it were coming back to me from the show. I remember there was a, there was a season where Tommy Shelby kept getting choked by a Russian girl, and then whenever he got choked, he remembered his his dead girlfriend. <laughs> that started getting a bit daft for me then. You know. And the, and then that, that Polly character gets really miserable as it goes on, and um, she starts to. I don't know. She gets. She starts to become a bit of a drag. You know, the writing for that because I think she's a good character, but the writing for her, she just becomes an absolute misery throughout the whole thing, and kind of becomes like you know if you've watched um, Breaking Bad, how um, Skyler in Breaking Bad just becomes this sort of spoil sport type of character. And I get the feeling everyone hates Skylar, even though she's like the voice of reason and she's, you know, she's saying, she's actually doing the sensible thing and saying a sensible thing. But she becomes a bit of a drag because, you know, she's spoiling Walter's fun in a way. And uh, I feel like that the Polly character gets a bit like that as well. She gets so miserable, it, it like becomes a bit of a drag whenever she's on screen. You know. Maybe the the new season might be all right. I'm 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 doubtful, but <clears throat> ahead is going to be like a Hitler character in the new season, and um, I'm just worried that they they're just going to be like make it some kind of Trump allegory or something, you know make him very Trumpian and make it very obvious that that's the kind of do you see do you see the similarities it's, it's Trump isn't it hey it's just like Hitler I feel like I feel like modern day television become very propagandistic you know and it's political messaging has become very heavy-handed actually I think Peaky Blinders is a good um a good um, case point in that because I, I in my I've got a theory that 2013 is like the cutoff point um, so around 2013 with television in, in general it all started becoming very heavy-handed with its political messaging and it all became very sort of in, in my opinion it became sort of much more propaganda than honest television and Peaky Blinders started at 2013 and I feel like you can start to see the the rot coming in, in in television in general you know even though it's it's a well-written show you can see the you know the the way they treat the communists from the beginning as they go on it's much more like they become much more sympathetic towards them and it all all becomes a bit sort of I don't know, like the forcing in characters just because they fit a certain demographic type and I, I, I don't know, just feel, it all feels like you, 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 so, you slowly see the propaganda seep in through that television show and Peaky Blinders is a good one because it starts at 2013 which is in my theory that's when the rot starts to set in with television. I try not to watch many, many modern shows because it's all, it all seems very like it's forcing the message down your throat, you know. Anyway, this has been alright. This last one's tasting a bit funky. There's a bit of a must to this one. A bit of a wet dog type of flavour. It's quite a good it's quite good. I definitely preferred the lager. That was quite quite an interesting drink that I, I'd have more of them if I if I'd bought more cans I just bought one thinking uh this will just be a cheap lager they put Peaky Blinders on just to sell some and this one interests me saying that they've followed some old recipe or it's inspired by the style of beer consumed back then um and you can it definitely tastes a lot less like in my mind, modern IPAs are just really fresh and really citrusy and really hoppy tasting. This doesn't taste like that. It much more reminds me of like a sort of um, 
like more like a best bitter almost but with a bit more like a hoppy taste to it I don't know I'm not very good at I'm not very good at describing different types of beers really I'm not very good on my beer history either so whether this is the sort of thing they drank back then I don't know but I do stand corrected when I said I, I wish they'd made a more of a period type of beer they actually didn't I didn't read the back and that seems to be actually what they did so um yeah cool okay yeah out of the two I recommend the lager go try that out it's got a bit more flavor to it it's a bit more interesting I think than the typical lager and uh, yeah I'd have more of that Saddler's Peaky Blinder lager all right there you go there's been a, a quick review of two beers and also a, a general review of the TV show from my half remembered memory of it <laughs> okay Thanks for watching. Bye.